Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to thy holy name forever. We just thank you again for this day. Coming before the saints of God. Those that are called to be saints in this hour. When Jesus Christ will come back to be glorified in his saints. Praise the Lord. Because that's what it's all about. There's going to be a resurrection at the coming of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul was brought into all the sufferings of Christ because he had hope in the resurrection. He says, because of this one voice, I stand before you today in hope of the resurrection. And they put him in jail. He was beaten. And eventually, he died in the faith, just like he said. He said, I have finished my course. Praise the God. Praise God. He said, I have kept the faith. Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. Thank you, Father, again, for hope and your mercy and in your love and in your presence with us in this hour. What I'm going to do to start out these messages again is I'm going to open this up with this scripture here in particular because this is a scripture that the Almighty God gave us on November, I believe it was what? Let me, I don't have that date with me, but it was back November the 6th, 2021. And it starts in Jeremiah 24, verse 6, as you see there. I will set mine eyes upon them for good. And I will bring them again to this land. And I will build them. You see, we're now in the land that God was speaking to our hearts about with this exact scripture. I will bring them again to this land, to this land, to the south east part a part of the United States of America South Carolina and I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them up wow what a blessing father that you do back up your word and when you give your word to your people as long as we remain in obedience to you you will perform that which you have promised to do Otherwise, if we break the covenant, you will also break your word of what you said, just like you did with Eli. As you promised Eli many things, but then when Eli perverted the very word that you gave him, you took it away from him and cursed his house. So we just bless you, Father, for your goodness and mercy, for the fear of the Lord. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And by mercy and truth, iniquity is actually purged. Praise your name, Lord. As I mentioned, I'm going to start out with this scripture. As you see there, I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them at heart to know me that I am the Lord. Praise your name, Lord. If ever we needed a heart to know you. You know, I heard this thing again about, you know, uh, your heart, you know how we're, we're, we're trying to clean our hearts up. Hey, what did God say here? He said, I will give them a heart to know me. When you had a born again experience, God gave you a good heart. Took away the stony heart. Gave you a good heart. He planted the seed on good ground, people, unless you had, unless you were one of the other places that he put the seed in and it didn't bring, produce any fruit said, I will give them a heart to know me. That's not a corrupt heart. That's not a perverted heart, like about the people I'll be talking about here shortly. That, that it says, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Praise your name, Father. And as... Uh, God give us that scripture. Then this one, 
really jumped out the other day when Sister Kathy read this exact verse in Psalms 119, verse 9, Beth. God gave her the word Beth. And she looked it up real quick, opened the Bible up, and there it came right there. Psalm 119, verse 9, Beth. Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed there according to the word. By taking heed there too according to thy word. Wow, that's exactly what it is, people. You better be careful. I often mention this about people that minister as the oracles of God. You better be sure that you're talking, saying what God says. I tremble at his word because I want to make sure that I'm 100% right. Not a little bit of fluctuation in, in his word or truth, either direction, but it has to be exact, absolute. Oh, let me not wander away from thy commandments. But in verse 10, it says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. And that's what jumped out at me the other day when I was listening to the scripture. With my whole heart have I sought thee. And what did it say back in Jeremiah? I will give them a heart to know me, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Wow, praise your name, Father. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O Lord. Thou knowest, Father, you Nobody's going to be saying anything to you without you knowing the absolute truth about what's coming out of our mouth and in our heart. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Not I will hide thy word, as old Ralph perverted for years. Oh, I will hide thy word in my heart. No, David, loud and clear, if David was the writer of these words, it says, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, O God. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. See, and that's what God has me doing. He has given me a spirit of judgment to sit in judgment. And he's also given me strength to turn this battle to the gate. When the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the word of God and his truth. The absolute truth. The pure truth. The sincere truth of God's word. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect out of thy ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget thy word. And I'm not going to forget it as long as I live. God gave me his word where he said that he was going to give us a heart to know him and that we are going to return unto him with our whole heart. And with my whole heart have I sought thee, Lord, as you know the truth, Father. And now we're going to go on here. This is a, as you see on the screen now, that was a comment that was on one of the messages, uh, messages just recently put up. Uh, I believe it was the one on the one that said the pastors are brutish. Something like that. Uh, but look at this comment now. Isn't this interesting? Teresa Grace. Uh, does anybody know who that is? That was the woman that Ralph Starer was commanded to marry back in the 1970s. Now, if God commands anybody to marry anybody, he expects you to be faithful to the covenant he put you in. But that covenant was broken to pieces by both of these people, her and Ralph. But here she's still trying to protect the overcoming ministry in her own demonic way. Now look at this comment. The truth is Rose Lear is not the vice president of the overcoming ministry and has never had that position or any other. Neither is Dennis Lear the president. Uh, look at my comment, what I put up here, what I said back to her on her comment on that recent message. I said, no, you are a liar like Ralph was. Just like you said, Ralph repented before God killed him. And that was amazing when she popped up that day and said that because I was talking about the perversion of Ralph Stair. And here's my comment. Wow, no way. 
did Ralph G. G. Stare or false witness and false brother Stare repent of his total perversion of God's word or the abundance of perversion of the second coming of Jesus Christ? And, and you know what? Old, old R.G. himself stated over the radio broadcast, worldwide radio now, that his whore rose. He didn't call her that, but I told I told that to his face now. Several times I said to I told Ralph that Rose was a whore. He had no problem with that. But the point is, he said over the radio broadcast that Rose was made the vice president after Oh, Teresa's Grace departed from the farm. I believe she got divorced from Ralph back in uh uh 2015. This is Teresa. And then right after that, not long after that, was when Ralph made what he said. Ralph said this. And anybody else that I'm sure other people heard it, that Rose was made vice president. But then uh in my comment back to Teresa. Also, Dennis has proclaimed loud and clear that Ralph made him president before he died. Now, here's my comment. I said, enough of your perversion as well. I said, so if what you said about Rose and Dennis is true, which I highly doubt it is, it would add to the list of lies that Ralph spoke. No marvel either way. You all are destined for the lake of fire. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and all and idolaters, and all liars, including Ralph, Teresa, James Rice, the whole lot of them, shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But what got me started on this as a trigger for this message was the word haughty. Last night I heard the word haughty being mentioned in the description of Sodom and uh, the things that went on with Lot. And that's what caught my attention was the word haughty because of the effect of pride brought about the spirit of haughtiness and homosexuality in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that was as you look in the book of Jude, talks about how they were set it as an example, and Peter even says that, set an example of those that follow in those steps of those people in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we'll get to that here in a minute. But look at 2 Samuel chapter 22. And he afflicted people, and the afflicted people thou wilt say, but th mine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. And as I often mentioned, old Ralph was brought down almost two years to the day, April the 3rd, 2021. He was brought down to the sides of the pit. Psalm 131 says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. And Lord knows the truth, people. When we speak words like this, he knows what's going on in our hearts. You ain't going to put nothing over on God, telling how much you love God and you don't do what he says. <laughs> it ain't going to work, people. All right, let's go on here. We're talking about the word haughty because I'm going to get to the scripture about Sodom and Gomorrah here in a minute. But look at this word uh, haughty. Proverbs 16, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 18, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Proverbs 21, proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. I think that really describes uh, false witness and false, false uh, brother stare. The greatest false witness on the coming of Jesus Christ the world has ever seen or heard. Proverbs 21 fits his spiritual character that he walked in perfectly. And it's about the same thing as James Rice. As we'll get to the perversion of uh, James Rice here shortly. 
But I want to just go as the Lord leads me here with this. Isaiah chapter 3, verse starting in verse 16. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with the scab a, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling into ornaments about their feet and their claws and their round tires like the moon. Pretty strange things that they had, but the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. And now we got mufflers on the cars. But uh, I guess they had something to muffle the noise, huh? The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. The rings and the nose jewels. Boy, that's all you see a lot of that stuff today. Nose jewels, earrings, uh, all kinds of body piercings on men and women. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And there shall come to pass. that instead of sweet smell, there shall be a stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Instead of a well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. Now, I remember my mother, her head went pretty bald. Now, that, as far as in the physical realm, <laughs> it, it, it came to pass even in her own life. I mean, her head went bald, and that was because of the way she did her hair. Permanence and all kinds of crazy things she did to her hair, and then she ended up being bald, just like this says there, well-set hair, bald. She had well-set hair at one time, and then she ended up, in the end of her life, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. The men, thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. That was in Isaiah chapter 3. We're talking about the word haughty now. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be, he, shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. Now, that, that's interesting because it says the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, it's kind of like Samuel hewed Agag to pieces. It's also like John the Baptist that laid the root, to, uh, laid the axe to the root of the trees, and just like the uh, parable of the fig trees, where the axe was laid to the root of that fig tree. The earth mourneth and fadeth away in Isaiah 24. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Just the words on haughty. And what caught my attention about the word haughty was when it was used last night. Because it always said that, well, it says here in Ezekiel, the description of the sin of the uh, Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. But what did that produce? You see, that's the whole key to this scripture of truth here, brothers and sisters. Behold, in Ezekiel 16, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her, in her and her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they, here it is right here, here is what, here is the fruit of the iniquity of the pride of Sodom. This is the fruit that it brought forth. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Now, wait a minute. It don't say abominations. It said abomination before me, not plural. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Now, look at what it says in verse 50. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Here's the end of verse 50. Therefore, I took them away as I saw Good. God took them away as he saw good. But it says actually, good in, in, in the actual scriptures is not italicized. 
So, you know, well, what, yeah, well, it wasn't in the original, but, and it still fits for what the scripture says. But it says, if you look at the context of the scripture, therefore I took them away as I saw. All right? Now, let's go to the, 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 the definition in detail of the sin of Sodom. Because this was the, the actual sin of Sodom that God detailed in Genesis chapter 18 for this hour that we live in. This is the hour and power of darkness that Satan has almost got complete control of the whole earth. He's not quite had the total earth yet, but very soon he's going to be given total control over all the earth. And the Lord said, Verse in Genesis chapter 18, verse 20, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, remember now, it said here in uh, Ezekiel, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me, therefore I took them away as I saw, and he sure did. He rained down fire and brimstone if you, if uh, to maybe stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. More so this day, yeah, it's going to happen to these same type of inhabitants of the earth. And the Lord said, Genesis 18, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and what? And see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come on to me, and if not, I will know. What did it say in verse 50? Ezekiel 16. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw. And what did God say? He declared in the beginning. He said, hey. He says, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come out of me. And if not, I will know. Now, you know, I heard too that, uh, you know, when I hear little things like this, these are the things that get me stirred up because this isn't the truth. It's, uh, the truth is Lot was not in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah. He wasn't in the midst of Sodom. If you can find a scripture to, to correct me on it, I, I appreciate it. But I don't recall anywhere where it says Lot was in the middle of Sodom. Okay? Now, when I hear things like that, you're adding to something, like, like trying to emphasize something more uh, of an exaggeration, if you could say, than the reality of the Word of God. Because if you look in verse 19 of Genesis, it says, And there came two angels of Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, I, I, I believe a gate is usually the entrance of... Uh, a place? If I'm not mistaken, that's what a gate is. Just like it says, straightest way and narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. That's the entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, no, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in on him, and he and entered into his house. Now, after that happened, and a, the little th some things happened there with the uh, men of the city, these sodomite perverts started banging on the door and uh, started yelling at Lot, saying, hey, bring them all down to us till we read all of them. And I don't have to go into detail what they're saying here. Anybody that's got any kind of spiritual understanding of the Word of God and what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, you see the same thing playing out today. And it's going to get even worse, people. Evil men and seducers were acting worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And what did Lot say to him? He said, and, and, and Lot said, I pray you, brethren, these are brother, brethren of his, do not so wickedly. Wow. So, as we see here, that example in Genesis 19 tells you what the sin of Sodom was. Because God even said, 
in profound detail in Genesis 18 when he was talking to Abraham. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous, I will go now and now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it. Now, I, I mentioned that he said that to Abraham, but uh, as you can clearly see, the Lord's talking to somebody here. And he said, the Lord said, because of the cry, I'm going to go down and see if this thing's really so or not. And the cry of it was exactly what happened to the angels. They were firsthand witnesses of the perversion that was going on, Sodom and Gomorrah. But here's uh, a beautiful scripture about Zephaniah and what he said. In that day, shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. And uh, we do have a holy mountain a holy city that's going to be coming down from God out of heaven very soon. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's coming back with that holy city. He's the king of kings. He's the king of that city. He's the king of the new Jerusalem. He's the high priest. He's still the apostle and high priest, as Paul said, consider the apostle and high priest. You know, somebody's mentioned the other day, well, you know, it could be, uh, you know, because I, 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 uh, Jesus said all things concerning me have an end. Well, then that means that the high priest is going to end. Then. If you're going to use it like that, if you're going to use that kind of criteria, then that means that the high priesthood of Jesus Christ is going to end. Because it said, all things concerning him have an end. But he was talking about specifically his life in the flesh had an end on the earth. That's why henceforth we know more Jesus Christ after the flesh, but after the spirit and the apostle and uh, bishop and shepherd of our souls. That's a spiritual connotation, okay? Now, just in uh, going on a little bit with this, what I want to do here is go over this word real quick. Because I thought this area, I know I often hear, oh, they all slumbered and slept like it was something bad. You know, and in a certain connotation now, slumber is a is a word that you'll see here very clearly what it talks about. But slumber, generally speaking, is not a very bad thing because I don't I don't recall the uh, wise virgins getting rebuked because they slumbered and slept because when they woke up, they were ready. They had what was prepared in their heart at the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as you can read in Matthew 25, I believe it was. But look at what it says here in Psalms 132, because I was thinking of the word slumber, you know, and how it's always been a bad connotation in, in a sense. People have portrayed it like that. And you can't do that in certain examples. But it says here in Psalms 132, verse 4, I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to my eyelids, until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Now, what did he say? He said, well, I'm not going to do that until I find a place, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Then it, that's what that connotates. Until I find a place, he says, I'm not going to allow that to happen until I find a place. Until I find a place for the Lord and a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. All right? And that's true. Because then once he found a place, then he could rest his eyes, slumber his eyelids, so to speak. But until then, he was searching for a place for the Lord. And then you read in Romans 11, where it says, According as it is written, in verse 8, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should see not, and ears that they should hear, not hear unto this day. Now see, that's another different connotation. You know, there's going to be coming a time here coming up in this uh, period of time where you might want to be with eyes of slumber where you may not see certain things that are taking place on the face of the earth until the Lord comes. You know, remember now, five wise, five foolish. The foolish were not prepared when they all began to sleep and slumber. 
but the wise were. They actually were prepared. They found a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Because when the bridegroom came and gave the call, they arose, trimmed their lamps, and went in to the Lord. So I don't, I, I don't perceive that as a really portrayed in the way I've heard it for a long time, like it's a bad thing, okay? But that's for that. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to close this one out because it's just a little bit, um, close this message out and then start up with what I'm going to talk about here uh, is what you see on the screen right there. This is the banner on the Overcomer Ministry, the one that Teresa Grace is still trying to protect for some reason. Maybe she got something going with James Royce as far as in the spiritual realm. Because why would she say something like she did that Rose and Dennis are not part of the hierarchy of the Overcomer Ministry when they are, when Ralph actually proclaimed them to be and Dennis has been popping off to people about how he didn't ask for that position, but God, uh, Ralph gave it to him. Uh, and I wonder why, because Dennis was given Ralph free course on his wife throughout the years to commit adultery. And God knows what other abominations they've committed. But anyways, look at this here. Shepherding us, I'm going to, this is what really, got me going again this week and the past few weeks is the wording of this banner at the Overcomer Ministry. But I'm going to close out with this because then I'm going to start with this. Would you see here what it says here? Shepherding us in the prophet's command by God concerning judgment and good order. Remember, consider, and be aware. Uh, Shepherding us in the prophet's command by God? You mean the prophet commanded James Rice by God to consider judgment and good order? And remember, consider and be aware that Jesus Christ is coming in your lifetime? This is the last generation? The last hour? Prepare to meet your God? But then it goes on here, and it's amazing what it says here, with great faith in the power of the resurrection and the nearness of Jesus' second coming. The Overcomer Ministry announces the passing of our dear brother, R.G. Stair, on April the 3rd, 2021, at 11.17 p.m. at his home in Kennedy, South Carolina. And I often reminded that that was the night of Ishtar or the night of Easter. That was Easter Day, people, that Ralph, God killed him on the day of Easter. Wow. Thank you for your faithful and continued support through these many years. Please keep us in your prayers as we move forward and seek God's direction for the Overcomer Ministry as we wait for Christ's return. I thought that Ralph had actually left detailed instructions, not in righteousness, but instructions on the coming of Jesus Christ and how he would come back. Uh, if, there, if, if James Rice is doing what this says here at the top of this, shepherding us in the prophet's command by God, well, let's consider the judgment and good order by remembering, considering, and being aware of this perversion that comes out of the overcoming ministry as we'll get to it in detail here shortly. So may God bless this word to your hearts, brothers and sisters, and may his fear grip your very soul so that you can be saved in this last and evil generation that we live in, because it's only by the fear of the God, by the fear of God, that men will depart from any kind of evil, and this is the most evil generation there's ever been. So may his fear grip your very soul. In Jesus' name is my prayer till we meet again. Amen. Amen.